Hello all. Uh, I am Dr. Prajakta Sahasrabuddhe, Associate Professor at Sanjiti Institute College of Physiotherapy. Welcome all of you to today's Physio TV session on prosthetic training and mobility considerations in lower limb amputation. Uh, we all know that lower limb amputation creates a great deal of disability. Uh, as per the statistics, it hampers livelihood of many people and uh, leading to a lot of participation restriction and uh, social disability as well. Uh, so to have uh, giving or to have taking a session on this, we have Dr. Aditi Soman. Uh, she is assistant professor since nine years at Deccan Education Society's Brijlal Jindal College of Physiotherapy. Uh, I'm very proud to say that she is our own alumna. She has done her master's in physiotherapy in cardiovascular and respiratory physiotherapy from Sanchiti Institute College of Physiotherapy. Uh, she specializes in amputation rehabilitation, which is our today's topic. She also uh, has interest in ICU rehabilitation. So welcome Dr. Aditi um, and over to you. Thank you, Ajatta ma'am for such a warm welcome. I would also like to say thanks to uh, you for giving me this opportunity to share my views uh, and my experiences while I treated uh, patients uh, with amputation in the acute care setup and in the long term setup for uh, prosthetic fitting. Okay, so let's start with the presentation. So today's topic is prosthetic training and mobility considerations in lower limb amputation. In this PPT, I have included most of the videos uh, which are which I have clicked while treating my patient and have been used purely for the academic and uh, knowledge sharing purpose after that due concern. Okay, so uh, well, I have not treated any of these patients, but these are always my uh, guide. These pictures are always, always the guide for me. Uh, how should I train my patient or how uh, independent an amputee can be? Okay, so the first is Manasi Doshi. She is the uh, para badminton player, Indian para badminton player and current world champion. She has achieved this success in just four years after the traumatic loss of her uh, uh, lip. Uh, the next picture is Arunima Sinha, uh, who too uh, unfortunately lost her uh, lower limb in a uh, trauma accident, road traffic accident, uh, railway accident, sorry. And she she is the first uh, amputee to uh, climb Mount Everest. And even she did this in, even in just a span of eight years post amputation. Even in that period, she was uh, climbing, she had climbed most of the uh, highest peaks all over the globe. And the third picture is uh, Sudha Chandran. Um, so she too is a dancer, Bharatanatyam dancer and an actress who continued her career in spite of the uh, challenge she faced after amputation and has won national awards for the Bharatanatyam dance and the acting in a movie. So imagine that level of independence my patients can achieve if they get a good physiotherapeutic guidance from the day one. Uh, so, as we are considering more about the uh, vascular amputations, according to 2011 census, there are nearly uh, 50 million people with locomotor disabilities, uh, while they have not found out the exact statistics of amputees. But nowadays, the, with the advent of uh, uh, road safety measures and industrial safety measures, the traumatic amputation is on the declining rate, but the uh, Amputation secondary to uh, vascular impairment and diabetic wound uh, is on rise. So, a uh, study done in Kerala shows that there is prevalence of 26%, uh, prevalence of uh, PAD in about 26% of the population. This PAD predisposes uh, a patient to narrowing of uh, arteries and thereby chronic uh, limb uh, threatening ischemia thereby then uh, reducing the uh, or compromising the vascular supply and unfortunate amputations. The prevalence of uh, PAD is further increased if a patient has comorbidities like smoking or uh, physical inactivity. Diabetes increases the prevalence of P or the occurrence of PVD four times. Okay, even cross smoking increases the uh, PAD exposure two times. 
so all these are really of concern while treat while uh, while treating this patient or seeing the patient of increasing number uh, with amputation okay so uh, it is really stated that uh, un- there are nearly half of the population who is under diagnosed with diabetes mellitus and peripheral arterial diseases so a strict criteria to uh, diagnose cad has to be made but the variability in the symptomatology uh, is uh, is uh, there so it is difficult to uh, diagnose the cad in early stages so these are all the predisposing factors for pad tobacco smoking uh, diabetes mellitus inflammation and which uh, causes atherosclerosis there then uh, chronic ischemia leading to uh, gangrene or uh, non healing wounds and then amputation so let's move on to the surgery part that the surgery is of amputation for the lower limb can be done into two that is minor and major surgery the minor ones are when there uh, is a toe or partial foot amputation but in this presentation we are talking mostly about rehabilitation of major amputation that is trans femoral or trans tibial amputation uh, and, uh type of amputation surgery uh, we all know is guillotine type that is the primary level of amputation or primary type of amputation uh, done in case of vascular injuries in order to salvage the maximum limb that is possible thereafter once the healthy tissue and the tissue is seen or the infection level is controlled a finite uh, uh, amputation or finite surgery that is flap method is done okay in which a posterior long posterior flap is sutured anteriorly length of a stump is again the uh, concern uh, literature says that uh, stump length up to 5 cm can be used for prosthetic fitting but if it is lesser than that the least possible level of stump has to be 5 cm below which it is difficult for the prosthetic fitting the length of the stump more the length of the stump better is the prosthetic fitting better is the muscular balance okay and better is the leverage that that we gain during the uh, uh, amputation that is why length of the stump is of uh, utmost concern when we are treating an amputee associated comorbidities yes i will definitely say they are, are uh, very essential to be uh, uh, evaluated in a patient with amputation because if a patient has obesity has diabetes that has predisposed patient to pad that will give another different level of challenges while uh, rehabilitating the patient predictors of rehabilitation outcome will be looking in the successive slide when we are discussing about assessment <clears throat> so once the surgery is done on uh, our aim as a physiotherapist should should to start treating and assessment as early as possible ideally we should treat patients or evaluate a patient pre operatively uh, the surgeries are generally pre planned or elective for the vascular amputation so why do we treat them pre operatively prehab is essential it is not to prepare the patient for maximum potential outcome of the procedure both surgically and functionally so what are we assessing in it we are assessing the patient subjectively and objectively what's the subjective outcome measures are knowing the history part the uh, the uh, presence of diabetes associated complications of diabetes such as retinopathy nephropathy diabetic neuropathy this this is essential sometimes patient may have uh, ihd secondary to uh, cardiovascular uh, arterial disease secondary to diabetes mellitus and all this will limit or will affect my uh, exercise prescription in the post operative phase so you need to monitor the uh, 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 the medical history and evaluate the uh, complications related to the metabolic diseases okay then uh, you need to uh, you need to even look for the uh, renal uh, function because these long term diabetic patients they do have renal impairments uh, secondary to renal nephropathy and uh, this may lead to uh, fluctuations in the stump volume so that is why renal function has to be monitored too uh, then our known respiratory musculoskeletal neurological conditions has to be assessed and uh, in previous level of mobility that like how patient was walking 
before the amputation if you if you are giving the prehab you should monitor the present level of ambulation uh, the assistive aid that the patient is requiring the distance that he is walking the factors that are limiting the uh, mobile ambulation that everything has to be documented the cognitive ability cognitive abilities of the patients has to be monitored maybe by the use of mater cognitive assessment test because uh, poor cognitive status has its own challenges that will be discussing afterwards then uh, yeah vision yeah, visual impairments are very common in chronic diabetics we we have already discussed the impairment of diabetic i am talking there are again diabetes is because diabetes predisposes to pad a uh, person who have pad and long term diabetics do have for this microvascular involvement uh, leading to retinopathy and the patient has visual impairment that, that is again going to be a challenge to rehabilitate your patient okay so visual and hearing abilities of the patient has to be assessed obesity is again a concern because most of the patient with diabetes will have obesity um and then uh, because of if, if the patient is physically inactive preoperatively and is obese then that again becomes a uh, uh, challenge for him uh, to transfer himself from bed to chair from chair to with the use of uh, walker and box so that is again a challenge that is that is why you have to monitor the obesity and how obesity assessment is required in the long term that will be discussing too as we discuss the long term management part of amputation rehabilitation psychological status many of the patients uh, have uh, issues like uh, anxiety depression if it is a traumatic amputation then post traumatic stress disorder is very common phantom limb pain phantom limb sensation these two are the psychological impairment that can, that are frequently seen uh, post operatively in all amputees so psychological status has to be assessed you can use hats and in hospital anxiety and depression Uh, status can be assessed in these patients. So um, the, and yes, we are seeing PAD diabetes. So we have to assess for the uh, smoking uh, habits and uh, tobacco chewing habit, alcohol that has to be monitored. In objective assessment uh, in uh, vascular, motor, sensory, and musculoskeletal and integumentary uh, evaluation of sound limb. sound as well as amputated side has to be done which is the uh, motor is uh, assessing strength uh, sensory is assessing diabetic neuropathy on the contralateral side musculoskeletal is some assessment of range of motion strength uh, integumentary is skin condition on the unaffected side affected side if it has a wound the wound measurements wound evaluation has to be done then uh, vascular is ankle brachial index of the opposite side can be calculated uh, the vascular status of the unaffected side that is called by palpatry method has to be found out so this is for better prognosis or better outcomes post rehabilitation so we we had seen something called as predictors of amputation rehabilitation when we discussed about the surgical part so this is the uh, the this is proposed by a surgeon called uh, banerji uh, who has given these 12 criteria that may that that would indicate that would indicate the success of uh, rehabilitation a success of uh, amputation and uh, rehabilitation and well fitting of prosthesis so uh, you can use this scale in order to find out whether the patient is really a candidate for uh, successful prosthetic fitting if the score of this scale is lesser than 60 if the, they have said that there is uh, there are chance, increased chances of uh, patient being uh, dependent uh, lack of mobile lack of mobility and even chances of mortality are high so uh, the score more than uh, 60 that is up to 100 and the patient has good potentials of successful rehabilitation and prosthetic mobility so as you assess your patient i i frequently see patients in the acute setup so uh, our main uh, we what we do is uh, first give them the education they are already uh, stressed out they are already uh, loaded with so much of uh, emotions depression anxiety uh, stress uh, talk to them first 
educate them i i frequently see my patient this is not an impairment this is not a disability please remove the thoughts of being disabled this is the surgery that is done to save your life amputation is not the disability that is what i tell them you uh, you will be able the patient will be able to walk i tell them you will be able to walk if you do exercises that are advised to you uh, adequately you can be treated with the prosthesis and then you can ambulate and then i give them the examples of other amputees other uh, their uh, if, if i am uh, treating them in an acute setup then i show them the other patients who are walking with the walkers or if i am treating them in a uh, in a primary setup when there is a the, the patient we see the patient for prosthetic fitting and their uh, post prosthetic fitting your training so i show them the the, the pr uh, pr competition sort of so uh, i tell them this is not an impairment this is not a disability so uh, reduce their anxiety reduce their try to reduce their emotional uh, affection then i educate them about prevention of contractures the mobility at all the uh, proximal joints has to be maintained for successful fitting and uh, successful fitting of prosthesis at successful outcomes post post prosthetic fitting if the patient is smoking uh, or has a tobacco addiction it has to be advised to uh, they have to be advised to stop or stop because that may lead to further uh, deterioration of uh, uh, vascular status and that may delay healing of wound and yes i do tell them to check this stump and unaffected foot to care of unaffected foot is very important i tell them this is not a disability but you make sure that you don't land up into any further injuries or any further uh, rise in the level of amputation or in the increase in the uh, or or you have the amputation on the other side so that is what they have to be advised about so the post operative uh, management of amputation is divided into these uh, five phases immediate post operative phase pre op prosthetic phase prosthetic prescription phase prosthetic training phase and reintegration phase and evaluation at each of these steps is very essential so what we are going to evaluate is the stump part and the overall mobility of the patient and for improving that mobility the associated system that is the balance musculoskeletal cognition psychological everything has to be assessed yes so um, when i uh, when we generally see these patients post amputation uh, it is said that pain perceived post vascular amputation is more so if you are treating a patient you need to find out the cause for amputation why pain so the post amputation pain can be of two types it can be a phantom limb pain or a residual limb pain phantom limb pain is the pain that is perceived in the in the uh, stump uh, part okay so it is the most uh, it is generally felt in the most distal part of the stump pain uh, the stump and it can be elicited by pressure or a uh, emotional uh, stimulus like stress okay and it is a cramping throbbing type of pain and as residual limb pain that we are going to uh, that we are that we generally see in the short term or in the acute phase uh, it is a pain that is adjacent to the stump uh, stump area uh, and that can be treated by relaxation techniques or by patient education or by reducing limb edema so this pain can be of two types it can be a neurogenic pain or it can be a nociceptive pain okay or a somatic pain so uh, residual limb pain is a it can be somatic or neuropathic so what we are going to do to reduce the residual limb pain is give adequate pressure reduction of edema uh, giving support or patient education relaxation techniques improving mobility would help in reducing residual limb pain most of the time patient does not cooperate for the uh, post operative uh, exercise program is because of the presence of residual limb pain phantom limb sensation is another concept wherein uh, the patients perceive that the cut part is still there the phantom limb sensation is absolutely normal uh, yes but phantom limb pain do disturb patient it is nociceptive it is uh, it is uh, unpleasant sensation 
so then you need to find out the reasons for this pain what are the reasons from reasons for that is it the vascular pain is it the muscular pain could be because of muscle tension is it the uh, in the long term is the pain is it because of neuromas the neuromas may give light a tingling type of pain and it can be elicited after penile sign and in the short term there can be a vascular pain there can be a muscular pain because of muscular altered muscular forces it can be a, a pain at some other side uh, because of uh, faulty sitting postures okay so you need to find out what is the reason of pain or is it the uh, cortical uh, engrams that are giving the pain stimuli in absence of the actual pain stimulus okay or is it the cortical uh, disintegration that is leading to the pain and that is definitely a phantom leak okay so a study was done by uh, authors has suggested that there is a long term of prevalence of uh, phantom limb pain in this population and it has to be addressed well in advance uh, or you should tackle it even from the acute phase if the patient is complaining about it you should start treating from even from the acute phase so what are the various strategies to reduce phantom limb pain Uh, mirror therapy is the uh, is the thing that that is commonly used uh, for phantom limb uh, reducing phantom limb pain wherein a uh, patient sees the uh, reflection of uh, movements of sound limb in a mirror and uh, this proposes to reduce the phantom limb pain the reduction in phantom limb pain post mirror therapy could be secondary to uh, acceptance of body image or uh, cortical reintegration that is what is the theory that is proposed for it phantom limb pain and even i have seen residual limb pain it uh, reduces a lot by uh, positioning by patient education by relaxation and as well as the use of the shrinker now uh, the shrinkers are uh, are available even for the bp admission here i have shown just only for the ak for ak stuff but the shrinkers uh, ensure the equal pressure on the stump part from all the sides i prefer shrinker uh, over the uh, elastic grip bandaging because the elastic grip bandaging needs to be changed after every 4 to 6 hours in order to ensure the adequate compression from all sides which may not be possible every time uh, so that's why i really rely on the shrinkers they are easily available Uh, please ask your patients to wear it once the flap method is done for your patients. Flap uh, shrinker can be worn over gelatin type of application. I have seen good results with shrinker for shaping of stumps and uh, for edema reduction. Uh, but there was a study on the uh, effectiveness of elastic crepe bandaging in reducing uh, residual limb uh, residual limb edema. The study says that semi rigid dressing. is better over this elastic uh, brand bandages or uh, shrinkers but every time it may not be possible to use semi rigid dressing uh, for even for the uh, ak it is difficult to use okay so rely on the shrinker they, they they give really good results phantom limb pain uh, can be further reduced by use of the cpa that is pneumatic post amputation mobility aid Uh, we are not using this in our setups. Uh, we make the patient walk with the uh, walkers. But yes, this does. There are many reviews that suggest the use of P P A M A, the pneumatic post amputation mobility aid, uh, to reduce the edema, to shape the stump. The studies have even shown that it can be used in gelatin type of amputation too, because this application of pressure and weight bearing. would increase the circulation uh transcutaneous oxygen supplementation was increased post uh, weight bearing in the ppama and that helped in reducing the wound size too so if available yes please rely on the ppama too uh, uh, i have never used it then the phantom limb pain can be further tackled by desensitization techniques like this uh, gradual friction massage uh, Now holding the eye frequently, tell my patients in the uh, short term or in the patient education only to handle the stump part as much as possible. So these are the few points I let them uh, realize without letting them know that there is something like phantom limb pain or tension that is present, but let them accept the part. 
it is many a they are patients are many many a time in denial about the uh, procedure they avoid looking or they are de so depressed because of the limb loss so i frequently tell my patient to handle this term touch it give them the tapping stimuli i give them the uh, pressure so that is that may have helped them but this is what i really follow in the short term too this can be done if the patient has flap method so the next is to maintain and or improve joint mobility and strength of the thumb uh, maintenance of joint mobility is of utmost importance for uh, gaining good outcomes after prosthetic fitting so all the ranges of the proximal joints has to be complete in or anatomical ranges has to be present uh, before for the successful prosthetic fitting and it, i think it is the duty of physiotherapists to maintain and improve the strength so the strength has to be at least four for prosthetic fitting so start with the anti gravity exercises immediately post surgery and uh, mainly uh, give them i frequently give them bridging and prone lying and scooting these three are the things that has to be given uh, because these are i feel these are the functional exercises that will be helpful then for them to uh, uh, use the uh, uh, assistive aids and uh, uh, may teach them the mobility in and out of bed so bridging proning and scooting these are the three important tasks that uh, we as a therapist should advise our patient so these are few uh, videos that i would like to uh, show you so all anti gravity exercises the abducts strength of abductors and hip extensors is uh, uh, at most important for uh, propulsion uh, using the prosthesis so uh, proning as early as possible strengthening of back extensors hip extensors abductors yeah then early mobility in and out of bed yes the early mobility in and out of bed uh, is uh, can be achieved the first image shows the uh, Yeah, it is the assisted form of uh, mobility by my patient is learning to uh, sit from supine like uh, though ergonomically not advisable, but uh, I do give it to them to improve their grip strength, to improve their uh, mobility, to improve their confidence, and to reduce their reliance on their relatives for uh, bed mobility activities. We make them walk. the patient should walk as early as possible the early ambulation uh, early mobilization is applicable in all the patients that is why we should examine the sound limb too for its sensation for its vascular supply for its integumentary integrity musculoskeletal assessment of the sound limb this is the reason why assessment of sound limb is essential balance too has to be assessed in the acute phase and uh, balance and transfer transfer training um, a must transfer is supine to sit sit to stand stay so bedside sitting to transition to wheelchair or to a chair so these are the must transition balance is really a challenge in a cancuties because of uh, unequal distribution of body segments thereby changing the cog and reduction in base of support so yes they do need a balance training this is further added if the patient has uh, obesity that is why obesity has to be assessed before uh, uh, starting uh, with uh, treatment these are the few basic scales that can be used in the short term or in the acute care to assess the uh, mobility status of the patient basic amputee mobility scale it is a, a very good scale uh, it's a small scale only four questions uh highest score is 2 the highest score is 8 uh, higher the score that means that the, the mobility of the patient is better it is assessing only four components of mobility to point to sit uh, bedside sit bedside sitting to standing standing on a walker okay uh, in the latter stance 
and then uh, cooking. So this, these are the four components that are judged, and it can be done daily in order to see the progress of the patient. And there is something called as amputee mobility predictor. Again, this is a very good scale. It is it has two perform. It has two scale. I mean, subtypes. That is amputee mobility predictor with prosthesis and no prosthesis. So you can do this AMP no pro in the uh, acute phase. That is without prosthetic use. It has the components of assessing balance and gait abilities of the patient without prosthesis. Okay. So uh, the questions are there are only twenty two and twenty and twenty one questions in AMP no pro and AMP pro. Uh, and the scoring is uh, 43 for AMP no pro and uh, AMP pro 47. And these scores, yeah, these scores uh, will predict will predict how much independent an amputee can be after the prosthetic fitting. So I can know from the present status of the patient how would be the future mobility of the patient would be. Okay, so I feel this is a very good scale. I frequently use it for the research purpose and for documentation purpose. Uh, this scale, the score of these scales also helps us to uh, level the patient with scale level. So what is the scale level? So scale level is the uh, classification for the uh, the classification for the uh, uh, level of uh, ambulation that is given by uh, association. American Association. This is generally used there for uh, getting the financial aids for prosthetic fitting. Okay, so the patient with K3 level of uh, uh, K3 level of score has the ability for potential for ambulation with variable cadence or is a community ambulator basically. And K0 is uh, does not have any ability to ambulate. Okay, so uh, you can use this AMP scores uh, to predict how mobile they would be after the prosthetic fitting or if they are really indicated for prosthetic fitting or not okay so if their the score is between 0 to 8 in AMP no pro that is that they won't they won't be uh, there won't be any change in their quality of life or their the process won't be of any much help so uh, better not to hear that give them the prosthesis so that is to offer the financial help to them MCID for uh, AMP is also found out. It is uh, 3.4, but it is not distinguished differently for AK or BK amputation. So yes, yeah, so this this completes my uh, treatment and assessment in the acute phase, that is immediate post-operative phase. And what I should share the checklist is that there is adequate strength, range, functional activities are achieved. General condition of the patient, bed mobility is achieved, all the transfers are taught or essential transfers are taught to the patient. Wheelchair propulsion if required. We have not discussed about bilateral amputees. So, yes, wheelchair propulsion, uh, or if the patient has does not have uh, enough of upper limb muscle strength or balance to propel himself or herself on a walker, yes, then wheelchair uh, transfers and wheelchair propulsion is required. Uh, bilateral amputees do require the transfer to wheelchair. Their balance impairments, their uh, their challenges are different altogether. Then unsupported standing balance and ambulation assistive devices. This all has to be achieved when you progress your patient from uh, the uh, post-operative phase to prosthetic pre-prosthetic phase. You are preparing your patient for prosthetic fitting. So before prosthetic fitting, when the patient is uh, is at home and is uh, still gaining the enough of strength or range or the condition of the stump, the health of the stump, that is the shape is still yet to be gained and it is waiting for the prosthetic fitting, that is the pre-prosthetic phase. You can give home health programs to your patient or you can call them to your OPDs uh, for the pre-prosthetic training. Okay, so what are the uh, components of conditioning? We call it as conditioning of stump. So uh, yes, they, they because the propensity training of this stump part was never talked before because there could be pain, the sutures could be uh, in a healing phase or it could be a gelatin type of fraction, uh, amputation. So once the uh, wound is healed, 
or the gelatin type of uh, amputation is changed to flap and then flap is uh, the wound is healed you can start with proprioceptive training of the stump part and you can advise your patient to bear weight on the stump and with the with the use of stack of pillows okay that improves the proprioceptive feedback okay then um, continue with the strengthening of stump as well as the sound limb shape conical getting the conical shape uh you can use shrinkers the shrinkers has to be changed after a frequent time period uh, because as the uh, edema reduces the uh, part gains the shape uh, the adequate pressure may not be maintained by the previously prescribed uh, shrinkers so it has to be changed frequently that's why patient needs to needs to visit physiotherapy clinic at least uh, once in a week so that we can monitor the progress regress of the patient Achieving complete anatomical ranges at all these at this stump as well as on the other side. Generally, the muscles that can get tight is iliopsoas, both for both AK and BK. Hamstrings in case of uh, BK amputation, and if it is a uh, if it is a BK amputation, the uh, abdu abductors are likely to get tight because the pull of abductors is more. In case of AK, it is the Pull of no, sorry. In case of uh, uh, AK amputation, the pull of abductors is more, so the abductors uh, are tight, are likely to get tight in case of AK amputation. Whereas in case of BK, the pull of abductors is more, so they can they are likely to get tight. So that is why we advise the anti-contracture positions uh, or ask them to do uh, Bhujangasan uh, or Paschimottanasan. Or prone line periods, or bridging. That was advised in the post or pre or immediate post operative phase in order to achieve this optimum length of the muscle that can get tight in amputee. Yes, scar treatment and skin preparation in uh, for the uh, prosthetic fitting. Uh, if if it is uh, still are not healed, uh, refer patient back to the surgeon. Uh, if it is scar is adherent. Give the uh, deep friction massage, or continue with desensitization technique, the tapping, pressure, uh, use of soft uh, stimulus, rough stimulus with a towel. So you can do this desensitization technique and prepare the stump, prepare the patient for further prosthetic fitting. Yeah, and this pre-prosthetic fitting is not just the training of stump and the sound limb, but is also the training of cardiorespiratory system because the challenges faced by the patient after fitting of prosthesis would be different. It is really taking a lot of energy to propel forward with the use of prosthesis. So the metabolic cost of walking really increases after fitting of prosthesis. If the uh, stump is short, short term, or it is a trans uh, femoral amputation, the cost of walking is too much. So, what you need to really take into consideration is conditioning of their cardiorespiratory system. Hmm? So, uh, a regular exercises that is uh, we are giving them resistance training, we are giving them the aerobic training, so that would really help them to. Uh, cope up with the that is that will really help them to cope up with the increased uh, uh, energy demand that would be placed on them as they start with the start walking with the prosthesis. Yes, so cardiorespiratory conditioning is important. If you have arm ergometer, you can use it to uh, to improve the cardiorespiratory uh, uh, endurance. Yes, in case of bilateral amputees. The challenges faced are again different that we have discussed already. Their base of support is tremendously reduced. They have much of balance impairment. So what we do for uh, in the post-operative and pre-prosthetic stage of bilateral amputees, we concentrate on strengthening of their uh, tonsil muscles, upper limb muscles. Strong work of upper limb muscles would be required in order to propel with the use of bilateral prosthesis. So it could be bilateral AKs or one AK, one B. K one AK one minor anything any combination can be there. So uh, if at all it is stubborn, then the generally the energy cost of walking may not be that much. But stubborn is bilateral AK and to be fitted with a prosthesis that is short. Okay. So but if it is a prosthetic fitting bilateral AK by uh, AK or BK one side AK one side BK then the energy cost of walking is going to be. Too high for which you need to educate and uh, train your patient in the post-operative and in the pre-prosthetic phase itself. 
get the r mergometer and start conditioning the coagulated tissue otherwise it is very difficult for them to cope up with the post post prosthetic fitting training so these are the factors that uh, determine the better prosthetic fitting we already seen transfers uh, then push up from sitting to wheelchair have independent standing balance cognitively sound patient and patient is walking independently with the walking aid so these are the prerequisites for prosthetic fitting but but this these factors can affect the prosthetic outcome if the strength of the muscle is less if it has poor hand dexterity because they need to done and do the uh, uh, processes when it is unable to wash and dress it to independent uh, self care activities is not possible associated pathologies like uh, neurologically uh, impaired impaired or stroke previous is ra oa respiratory problems i had told you the uh, these sessions are mostly having some old mi or ihd uh, so poor cardiovascular status they can again be a problem for prosthetic training poor motivation yeah if the patient or he or he don't or her own is not motivated how much effort to take for the pre prosthetic in the pre prosthetic or post operative phase uh, that would rarely give you the results and uh, yeah issues concerning about the social support and home environment that makes a lot of difference uh, amputate rehabilitating the amputee is uh, is really a team approach everyone in the team the family members uh, has to have a sound communication about patient's health so what are the challenges that are faced by the patient in in the pre prosthetic uh, phase fall is very common in these patients uh there are studies uh, done by systematic review that is done by hunter patel uh, they suggest that the factors that are common to uh, other population like pre advancing age poor morbidity lower limb or uh, reduced strength or weakness of lower limb muscles these factors plus the added factors like uh, cognitive impairment trans femoral level of amputation so these all can further predispose a patient to fall okay and fall prevention strategies has to be incorporated in all these patients so that is what is the recommendation of the author reduced vibratory sense is another reason for prevalence of fall in amputees cognitive impairments uh, there was again uh, another systematic review done by coffe uh, atal who says that the uh, patients do have uh, uh, prevalence of uh, cognitive impairment uh, and it is these cognitive impairments are negatively associated with mobility use of assistive aids and uh, maintaining independence so cognitive impairments we really have to take care of cognitive impairments can be found out by uh, monterrier cognitive assessment scale uh, that is very well used and has uh, good reliability and validity in uh, our patient population Two, that is only amputation. Fall, uh, fall prevention or predisposing, predispose or uh, the risk to fall can be assessed by work balance, uh, uh, DBS work balance scale or uh, TUG, TUG, time to time and go test. Uh, the uh, the uh, time of 19 seconds and more than that predisposes an amputee to higher risk of fall. So the cutoff score is 19 seconds for amputees. impaired quality of life yes uh, there is a uh, there is a study that was done in tarshai uh, prosthetic rehabilitation center in india that have su- they have suggested that there is impaired quality of life in these uh, amputees uh, if after 6 uh, months of surgery and uh, the maximum affected domain was uh, social social domain okay so and the highest the uh, was uh, the highest score was obtained on environmental aspect psychological effects yes the loss of limb uh, this body the disfigurement may predispose the patient to uh, psychological issues like depression and anxiety whereas these these depression and anxiety reduces with time the author of the research has suggested the psychological aspects of depression and anxiety they reduce over time but then by that the somatic uh, the uh, nociceptive pain like uh, phantom limb pain 
that predisposes that that is the another real psychological effect uh, of uh, amputation that is really a challenge for amputee so prosthetic prescription uh, uh, we are here the role of orthotist and prosthetist is uh, really crucial we do work with them uh, yes it is a good communication between prosthetist and orthotist and a physiotherapist uh, regarding the uh, length of the muscle the weight bearing area, this the condition of weight bearing area uh, so uh, yeah they are the team members we need to talk them they do take our opinions Uh, so this is the BK prosthesis, endoskeleton prosthesis. Uh, the area of uh, weight bearing is patella tendon, and this is the quadrilateral socket that is used for AK amputees. Uh, the ischial weight bearing apparatus. Then we have uh, another scales. These are the scales that can be used to assess the mobility post fitting of prosthesis. So you, uh, your patient is now fitted with prosthesis, and now you want to check the patient reported uh, status of the mobility or how do they perceive their mobility. So it is something called as Newton scale. It was uh, it was developed by Newton, um, and they were finding out some some outcome measure to find out success of rehabilitation, amputation rehabilitation after vascular amputation. So this is the scale that was uh, made by a surgeon called Newton for finding out successful uh, amputation rehabilitation uh, in vascular amputees. So it has a uh, it has a four it is a four point scale. The first three questions check about the habits of wearing prosthesis of a patient. Whereas the fourth question assesses the uh, there are three uh, there are three sub questions in it dichotomous question. That assess how how comfortable are they with the use of their prosthesis. So very small simple scale uh, that can be done in your uh, setup uh, to assess how independent and how comfortable a person is after wearing the prosthesis. The higher score is twelve. Higher score is twelve. The higher the score indicates greater performance with the prosthesis and more comfort of the patient. Even these scores are well correlated with the K level classification. Hmm? How much independent a patient can be after prosthetic fitting? So even these scores are well correlated with the K level classification. Okay, so uh, the uh, score of more than nine suggests that patient is community ambulator. Hmm? Can be a community for probable community ambulator. Uh, six to eight score indicates that patient is uh, K two level uh, ambulator. And then K one. Then we have uh, something called as prosthetic limb users survey. Uh, so it is again a self self report uh, measure for assessing mobility of lower limb amputation. It assess it assess uh, amputee's perceived ability to uh, carry out basic amputation to advanced or higher level of amputation. Like the last component is about uh, walking on hills. Or hiking, or walking on uneven terrain. So plus plus uh, scale or the prosthetic limb users uh, survey of mobility. It assesses amputee's perception about his level of independence and his level of comfort of walking with prosthesis. It has two uh, two forms: seven question form and twelve question forms. Higher the score, better is the ability to. Mobilize with the help of prosthesis. Yeah, then there is one more question is that uh, that we uh, frequently use uh, after prosthetic fitting. We do use AMP Pro, AMP Pro two, uh, and this locomotor capabilities index. AMP Pro was interviewer based questionnaire, uh, wherein the therapist asks some components of balance and gait to patient, like get up from the bed. And we uh, check whether the patient requires assistance, or we ask the patient to walk some distance, and then we grade. But locomotor capabilities index is the self-report or patient-reported uh, 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 question. Is where the patient mentions uh, about the level of ease or the level of independence in performing uh, global, basic, and advanced level of ambulation. Higher the similarity, higher the score, better is the. Locomotor capability of the 
expression uh, we had uh, uh, my one of the articles was with about this comparison of kmp and the locomotive governance index it is about to uh, be published there is we, we thought that the person who score higher on amp would, would score on higher on the lci scores too right the higher the score on amp that is the higher the score on lci the locomotive governance index that is self perceived level of mobility would be higher too but there was a negative correlation that is i feel i i would take it as now uh, we as a therapist are lacking still somewhere in transfer of training of this patient okay we may be grading them on a higher side in interviewer based question but they are not understanding how to use those capacities in their life to be as independent as possible so i think there is the result of the study that is soon to be get published is uh, is likely you we need to train them or train them in the outdoor scenarios too for the better uh, function mobility and work related leisure related activity then there are these other question as to that can be used in an anthropy bbs we have already seen that that can be used uh, to assess the risk of fall uh, tag uh, the uh, score uh, the recommended score is 19 seconds who vrs is is the questionnaire that would help in assessing quality of life in the uh, patients with anthropation it is available in marathi hindi gujarati malayalam tamil in most of the regional languages of india can can be used to assess quality of life uh, sf36 sf these are all again reliable and valid and valid tools of assessing quality of life in patients with amputation then this physic uh, prosthetic evaluation question is and walking impairment question is these are again the uh, amputation specific question is but i found uh, i think these are quite lengthy ones so i have never used this in my uh, clinical practice so once this all training assessment uh, is done or is ongoing the prosthetic training what they what we are really doing is forward uh, for the uh, exercises in a controlled environment maybe in a parallel path in front of the walker for this is the photo this photo is taken uh, when we are working in a primary setup it is the primary uh, level setup for the prosthetic fitting so we don't have much sophisticated equipments to treat and evaluate our patients so uh, these are the exercises that can be given to improve the uh, static and dynamic balancing standing then we are giving them gait training in the uh, parallel bars out of the parallel bars and then gradually train them on slopes curves uh, carrying weights then yeah we do we should teach them how to get up from standing from the floor because the risk as we have seen the risk of falls is higher uh, if we are aiming that these patients should be community ambulant without the use of any assistive aids like without using cane or without using uh, crutches what if they fall at any particular time? so they you all should train them we should train them for standing from floor to so this is all the uh, the practice or the uh, that we are following for most of the time but there is something recent that is been now uh, even seen to that we have to give them uh, dual tasking okay so as uh, like backward subtractions or reverse subtract subtraction while to giving them balance training gait training it is said that it improves their balance as well as reduces the cognitive impairment so that is that is a good strategy that you all can incorporate in your uh, treatment in order to avoid falls in order to re avoid reduction in cognitive status in order to improve their balance uh, the uh, dual tasking can be added nowadays uh, even uh, these sophisticated setups are using virtual reality based programs to train uh, balance and gait to the patient many as uh, many software based uh, 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 programs are available for training uh, balance and gait to patient um which we are still uh, working on hopefully we'll get get we'll get the this uh, in uh, some day okay so yeah these are that are the good strategies uh, that can be used to promote further uh, 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 independence in the walking or mobility
so things that should be addressed during the gate training yeah this yeah this is very crucial generally the step length with the prosthetic leg is small so you have to advise them for the symmetrical width of walking pace with uh, weight transfer equal on sound and prosthetic limb stride length usually patients will take shorter step faster shorter and faster step with the sound limb loading of prosthetic toes that they avoid doing if they generally bear the weight on the uh, heel and propel forward they should be advised to uh, bear entire weight and then propel forward so these are the few considerations that has to be addressed while gait training to the patient we are still giving them exercises uh, exercises in a controlled environment i ask these patients to uh, get the videos to me where they are walking at home walking at their or working at their workplace so i can work accordingly uh, or work specifically to tackle the needs for needs at their workplace or at home so just ask them to uh, get the videos where they are working or uh, living and train them accordingly Yes, the assessment is continuous process. Uh, and this is just the transfer. This is just the pre-post prosthetic fitting training. Uh, the there is something called vocational rehabilitation that still has to be done. Where you have to train your patient uh, for the uh, for their workplace. If at all they need change of job uh, or if they need work site modification, that is another aspect that has to be taken care of. Assessment. physical assessment as well as assessment of the housing occupation hobbies and interest related activities many or many patient nowadays are asking for uh, for adjustments in the cars and two wheelers in order to be independent in their uh, transport related activities too so yeah that is again a uh, area of uh, much work and social service support and support for family and friends is very essential in order to cope with this journey of prosthetic rehabilitation this is a long journey and uh, yes they need emotional support from friends family members too uh, so here is our patient at the primary care setup bilateral amputee one with pick amputation long term now just treated with joypur fit foot and uh, other side has hip disarticulation we are waiting for his hip Uh, the uh, the other side process to be uh, made so that he can start walking but till then we are just working up on his upper limbs and balance and mobility with the single leg thank you for your patient listening thank you thank you so much aditi ma'am it was a wonderful and in depth discussion about lower limb amputation uh, and of course you uh, rather than just a patient impairment you focused on the contextual factors what are going to be the activity limitations how the patient's overall participation would be rest restricted and uh, basically how these factors are going to play a great role when it comes to uh, the rehabilitation of the patient because it is not that we are just managing that particular symptom or impairment we have to capacitate the patient to engage into the real life scenario and for that assessment and this versatile assessment is very very crucial as you mentioned so uh, thank you so much again uh, for uh, having this wonderful discussion with our audience um i would also like to thank uh, dr parak sancheti uh, chairman of sancheti groups mrs manisha sangvi ma'am uh, who's executive director of sancheti healthcare academy uh, for their uh, encouragement uh, i would also like to thank dr apurva shimpi who's our principal uh, who has always believed in us and who always encourages us and of course uh, thank you all the viewers Uh, who are supporting um, the physio tv constantly and of course thank you to the uh, technical team without whose support this activity would not be possible thank you so much and um, we will meet in the next physio tv session thank you so much thank you.